In the beginning, HIV AIDS was overwhelming and the world just threw up its hands in despair and said, Africa is a lost cause. There really is no way to turn this epidemic around, but we found that that wasn't true. And with an investment of resources, commitment, and compassion, today we've turned a corner. It's a wonderful opportunity for Texas Children's Hospital and Baylor College of Medicine to take what has already been developed here and grow it exponentially to something that quite humbly we feel is going to be transformative for global health for children around the world. Mark Klein had the vision for BPI, Baylor International Pediatric AIDS Initiative, putting together programs and services in a very unique way that only a handful of other children's hospitals can do. The birth of the Global Health Initiative was a program in Romania to train doctors and nurses to care for children with HIV. We replicated that same experience in Botswana and then in other countries across Africa. And over the first five years after treatment was introduced, about 350,000 children received treatment. All of those children would have been dead without it. Before we knew it, we had a network of children's centers across Eastern Europe and in Sub-Saharan Africa. Today, we provide care and treatment to more HIV-infected children than any other institution in the world. We're very proud of that. The Center of Excellence here in Botswana was the first on the continent of Africa. It was the best gift the children of this country could have gotten. It has made a lot of difference to the lives of thousands of children, not only here in Khabarone, but throughout the whole country. When you talk of pediatric HIV in, in Uganda, it's almost synonymous with Texas Children's Hospital and Baylor College of Medicine. The Center of Excellence is used as a springboard to actually support prevention, care and treatment services across the country. I actually have known Dr. Klein and the work of BPI for over 14 years and over $40 million impacting almost 100,000 people now. Mark really has a way of bringing people into the process so that it's always developed to be sensitive to the local culture, which is very important. And if you look at what's happening now in those centers, it is phenomenal. It just opened the doors to a lot of opportunity. They are passionate about it. They know what they are doing. They identify the critical part of what you are asking. And most of all, they react quickly. They're the best ambassadors that you can find. So far, the impact has been tremendous, has been positive, and I'm very optimistic. We have a real opportunity now to tackle other diseases that are robbing children of their health and lives, like malaria and tuberculosis, neglected tropical infections. Why should children be dying of acute leukemia in Africa when we know that 90% can be cured here in the United States? One of the things that we worry about in sub-Saharan Africa is the impact of HIV disease on the development of cancers, AIDS-related malignancies that are uniquely seen at a higher incidence in children with HIV disease. But there are many sub-Saharan African countries where there are no pediatric oncologists, so there's nobody in the entire country that is taking care of children with cancer or has that as an obligation. That's almost unthinkable in, in terms of the context and the environment in which we live. And we had faculty members developing a pilot program, and it was tremendous. It was able to triple the uh, number of diagnoses of children with cancer in Botswana, and nearly triple uh, the improvement in outcome and prognosis for these children. As the cancer specialist, you arrange the treatment plan and then the pharmacist mixes the chemotherapy and the nurses deliver the chemotherapy. And as it turns out, none of that was available. And so I found myself opening up boxes and reading uh, package inserts to figure out how to mix this chemo and mix it myself. And so I found myself basically the doctor, nurse, and pharmacist all in one. We'll round on all the patients in the morning, see the new patients. If there's patients who are getting chemotherapy, 
then someone will mix up the chemotherapy and, and then you make sure everything was actually done correctly. So you kind of have an end of the day round again with the resident or medical officer and make sure the chemo was given and everything has been going okay. It's not the best thing for the children to have one person doing it all. It is just amazing how important a team really is. And so as a result, we have a nursing curriculum that we've put together to apply to Botswana. We're creating a pediatric cancer core, uh, which is sort of analogous to the pediatric AIDS core. We've created a pediatric oncology nursing core. We're developing a pediatric oncology pharmacy core. And so all the different elements that are necessary to really transform a system which BPI has made possible, are being put in place. We feel quite confident that we're going to be able to transfer the intellectual uh, capacity through a train-the-trainer program so that in each country there will be a subset of intellectual knowledge and competency in treating children with cancer. More than 80% of the kids are cured in the United States. And I think that model is really possible in a large part of the developing world as well. I think we can do that in the countries where, where BPI has a presence. I think we have the infrastructure. I'm actually really excited to see what happens now that we have three doctors and that enormous support network. And if we can increase that to five or ten doctors, just imagine how many children would benefit throughout the world. UNICEF, I have to say, has welcomed this global health initiative because it's the way we've tried to work from the start. This is a center of excellence that is important for us to harness for international public health goals. Working with BPI, working with Texas Children's Hospital, working with so many donors and partners has been a blessing, but the fight is not over yet. Fortunately for us, we have also over the last few years been able to train a number of local doctors to advance the health of children throughout Botswana. A number of the centers that we have built and operated across Africa and in Romania now are completely staffed by African professionals. That's a real success story. That just makes it permanent, it's sustainable, and it's a web that keeps expanding so that children will benefit in perpetuity. So your dollars don't have a limited life. They, they just go on and on. There is no place in the world better suited at this point in time to take on these diseases. It's an obligation that we have as compassionate human beings. And we have the tools, we have the wherewithal to make a real difference, to really change the world.